Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is April 26th, uh, or 20, or well, day 27, I think, of the Lico Day Challenge. Who hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's problem. And also, there's a luck thingy. Click on it for 10 coins. They add up, I guess. Today's problem is 319 Bob Switcher. And apparently, I haven't solved this one yet. Uh, I don't know. Just in case. Uh, okay. So there are end bulbs that are initially off. You first turn on all the bulbs, then you turn off every second one, and the third one you toggle every third one. Okay, so I mean technically the first two hours of toggle, right? Um, I would say this is a problem that I've done before, maybe faced in a different way. And given that the constraint is 10 to the ninth, you're not going to be able to... Uh, um, <clears throat> Uh, 10 to the 9th, you're not going to be able to, you know, simulate it, right? Because that's just a lot of number. I think the idea here is, uh, I think the easiest way is probably, um, and I talked about this actually recently on my Discord on on similar things, which is just do a brute force, maybe do simulation on small ends, and then kind of see if you can figure out a pattern, right? Um, here, you can do a little bit of a proof, though. The idea here is that, okay, let's say you have... Now you have all, all these zeros to begin with, so then the first one turns them all to one, right? And then the second one um, goes to every other one, right? So then you have something like this, right? Uh, typo, but you get the point. And then the third one, you toggle every third one. Uh, do, 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 do. And then, so basically, <clears throat> what happens is that for... for uh, <clears throat> so for for another way to phrase it maybe is just that for the the i thing the i bulb um it is going to get toggled by um one just because it's the first one uh and then uh, maybe another way to say it is so I'm trying to like figure out a way to articulate this at the same time this is a way one off thing so it doesn't really uh like I don't have practice talking about this one but for example you have just j for or j where i mod j is equal to zero right um and then you can maybe play around with small numbers like like for example if, if you have 10 then you have one two five ten right um those are the the factors and then you know if you, if you do 20 maybe it's one two five uh or one two four five ten twenty i think something like that right um, and then if you kind of figure it out, um, another way to say it is, um, you know, um, another way to think about that is that if it has even number of factors, then it's going to be zero because you toggled it even number of times. And then, you know, that's a full parity. You have given numbers of, uh, uh, yeah, it's going to be zero, right? And if you have odd numbers, well, then you have odd. Well, what... Uh, and and then now you ask, well, what what numbers have uh, an odd number of factors, right? Well, another way to kind of rewrite this, for example, for this twenty, maybe I can even do something, you know, we could do another number. It doesn't matter, but I think twenty is a pretty good number. Another way to write it is one times twenty, uh, two times ten, four times five, right? So th in this way, you can see that for every factor, there's um the opposite, not the opposite, but like I forget the word the pro um. The dividend? No, eh. I don't know, but whatever. It has a partner in which it creates the number, right? Except for one case, or not one case, but it's just that it's not unique. Uh, is when you have uh, a square, a square number, right? So, for example, you have sixteen. You have, uh, or maybe, uh, maybe just, yeah. Let's say sixteen. Then you have one, two, four, eight, uh, sixteen, right? And here, if you want to rewrite it, you have one times sixteen, two times eight. And then you have four times four. So this four times four rep is repeated twice, which is why you know in, in distinct factors you only have odd number of factors. And in this case, because you t press this button n times, it is going to be uh, it is going to be uh, what you call it. It's going to be on, right? So one more thing to kind of note about this is that. 
is that everything builds on each other in a way, even though it doesn't seem super clear at first, because you have to, because if you look at what I just said, I'm, I'm just trying to f tell you what happens on the 16th one after 16, right? Not, and then not um, how many, how many boats are on. Um, I'm not telling you how many boats are on after, um, I'm not telling you how many boats are on after uh, I've ran, right? Or something like this. Because basically, for example, you have six, like we say 16, but there's actually 16 boats. And then, you know, some amount of them are uh, uh, whatever, right? But it turns out that you can actually do this inductive. Uh, is it? In, yeah, in with induction. You can do this with in inductively because, for example, after one cycle, um, after the first cycle, you know, uh, you have some configuration, right? Which is all ones. Actually, we have it here, right? And then after the second cycle, you have all the one zero one zero one zero, right? But the key thing to note, right, is that uh, and then three one oh 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 one 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 something dot dot dot. Right? I'm too lazy to figure it out, but or like just to do the math. But the idea here is that when you go from two to three, for example, everything before that doesn't change anymore, right? So the only thing that changes is the third one and everything afterwards, but then that's part of the math. Um, so you have this formula. If you take a smaller number before three, it would never be zero, right? It would never be a, a factor for that reason or the other way around. Um, and so the answer is, in, in a kind of a way, the answer for 16 is just the answer for 15, Plus, uh, so f of 16, say, is equal to f of 15 plus is, fi six, is light 16 on, right? After 16 rounds. So you kind of phrase it that way. And then you can also say, you know, f of 17 is similarly. You got f of 17, or 16, sorry. Plus is light uh, 17 on after 17 rounds, right? And of course, uh, you know, you can rewrite this as, it's like 17 on after 16 rounds and then do one more round, but we already kind of did the math, so I'm not going to repeat that part on the square root thing, right? So then now the question is how many numbers are there? Well, as we kind of discovered, after n rounds of n light bulbs, the only thing that's going to be on are the square numbers, right? So then now another way to phrase it is how many square numbers are there of length n, right? Or sorry, of of size n or something like or like of n or smaller or eh, something like that maybe i'm saying it a little bit imprecisely but you get the idea right um and it turns out the number of square numbers you go or less than n is actually just a square root of n right why is that because um you can kind of think of it another way right For, uh, the reason is because let's say n is you go to um some big number right uh, let's just say 100 right so the, how many square numbers are 100, right? Then you could write it as 1, 2, 2, uh, 2 to the 2, 3 to square, uh, 4 square, dot, 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 i square, right? For some i. Um, and in that case, of course, you can just solve i square is equal to 100 or you go to n or whatever. So you have i square is equal to n uh, or technically something like this. And then you take the square root and you have like i. Maybe i is not the best way to write it because i can also maybe be as imaginary. So I don't know. Whatever. The point is that, you know, so so that's why the answer is just going to be return square root of n. Uh, yeah. Give it a run. Oh, I have to... And of course, uh, I mean, of course you want to round down. Uh, well, eh, technically it's round down, but there might be some mathematical imposition. So we'll see. I don't think it exists under uh, 1 billion, but I could be wrong. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I believe someone proved this to me, or m maybe it wasn't a billion, it was some other number. But I could be wrong, so I don't know. Someone... You know, have a counting case. Let me know. Um, due to due to IE um, numerical, I won't say imposition. It's just you know uh, that's how these things work sometimes. But I believe it should be okay. You could add a little bit of a factor if you like, but I don't know if that messes things up. Um, cool. 
Uh, that's all I have for this one. Hopefully the explanation is good. Uh, let me know what you think. The code is very short, but the explanation is the fun part, I suppose. So yeah, uh, I'm going to call it a night and watch the rest of the NBA games. If, you, if you're here, let me know, uh, well, one, if you watch the NBA and what team are you winning for this year. And that's all I have. So stay good, stay healthy, take good mental health. I'll see you later and take care. Bye-bye.